क्लाइमेट चेंज मीन्स चेंज इन एवरेज वेदर पैटर्न चेंज इन लॉन्ग टर्म वेदर पैटर्न एट ग्लोबल स्केल रीजनल स्केल एज वेल एज लोकल स्केल वॉटर क्राइसिस इज अ सिचुएशन द डिमांड ऑफ वॉटर बाय द इंडिविजुअल्स इन अ रीजन फॉर सोशियो इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज इज हायर देन द वॉटर अवेलेबिलिटी और वॉटर सप्लाई Hello friends let's discuss the questions of climatology and world geography which were asked in this year mains examination 2023 the first question is discuss the consequences of climate change on the food security in tropical countries so in this question you were supposed to write about the impact of climate change on the food security in a particular region and that is tropical region the answer to this question can be started in two ways one you can start answer with food security you can define food security you can talk about various pillars or components of food security and then you can talk about how climate change is posing threat to various components of food security in tropical areas means you can take the examples from tropical regions of the world second you can also start your answer with climate change you can define climate change then you can talk about various risks associated with climate change like increasing severity of extreme weather events decreased moisture availability in the soil correct and then you can talk about how climate change is impacting the agricultural production the income of people and health of people and food security okay so in two ways you can start this answer let's uh, right, uh, uh, let's talk about the food security food security means a condition when everyone has access to sufficient amount of good quality food to have a fully functional and healthy life the concept of food security has a space and time dimension means every individual in every region has food availability correct and time dimension means availability of food should be stable across the time it should not fluctuate the food security concept does not talk just about calorie it is about nutritious food this means balanced diet should be available and food security has three pillars what are these three pillars the availability of food availability of food means food production whether sufficient amount of food is produced or not second dimension of food security is access to food means whether people can afford the food or not or food is evenly distributed from one region to another region or from surplus region to deficit region or not that is concept of access and third is concept of utilization of food means if people get the food whether their body is capable of absorbing the nutrients or not okay so these are the three pillars of food security so on in answer you can first define food security then you can talk about three pillars of food security now how climate change is posing threat to these three pillars of food security look climate change means change in average weather pattern change in long term weather pattern at global scale regional scale as well as local scale increase in severity of extreme weather events increase in global temperature all these are manifestations of climate change now because of climate change food productivity is decreasing 
not only in tropical regions but all across the world but here we will take examples from tropical area now what are the food production systems in tropical areas first is you can say cropping systems cropping systems second you can talk about animal rearing systems and third you can talk about you know fisheries resources these are three major agricultural systems which are practiced in tropical areas cropping system means cultivation of crops either for subsistence purpose or commercial purpose animal rearing may be commercial or subsistence correct and fisheries are the major source of food and nutrition for the people in coastal areas around one third of world population which lives in coastal areas that depends on marine food for food and nutritional security now because of climate change the cropping systems in tropical regions are under threat correct and we all know that in tropical areas like india southeast asia uh, uh, tropical parts of africa agriculture is technologically backward infrastructure is poorly developed means back backward methods of cultivation are practiced due to inadequate infrastructure the cropping systems are highly dependent on natural conditions majority of farmers in these areas practice rain fed agriculture now due to global warming and climate change the rainfall pattern is changing the risk of drought risk of flood has significantly increased in recent years and that is posing threat to agriculture in these areas correct so due to predominance of rain fed farming practices the agricultural systems are in tropical parts are more vulnerable like sub saharan africa india southeast asia majority of farmers in these regions they are poor marginal and they practice subsistence of agri uh, type of agriculture correct so that's why their agriculture is highly dependent on mercy of nature and that's why they are more vulnerable similarly animal rearing the animal rearing sector is also vulnerable in multiple ways one animal rearing is mostly practiced in grassland areas and because of global warming and desertification the grasslands are shrinking, shrinking and that is one of the major uh, 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 factor which is reducing animal productivity in arid uh, in semi arid areas of the world typical example is like sahel so sahel and savanna region of africa in sahel and savanna region of africa animal rearing is main stay of economy major source of livelihood for the people due to desertification due to climate change the grass availability has declined and that is one of the major problem second is because of global warming the productivity of animals is decreasing in hot environment the animals are stressed and when animals are stressed their yield their productivity decreases even the risk of disease outbreaks has also increased in the wake of global warming and climate change correct so due to multiple factors the productivity of animals is decreasing and that is posing threat to food security of the people where animals are major source of food diet uh, uh, of the people fisheries third is fisheries sector we all are aware that because of global warming the oceanic water is getting more and more acidic not only that even temperature of oceanic water is increasing and because of these changes which are happening in oceanic water in the wake of climate change the fisheries resources are decreasing the coral reef ecosystems they are major you know uh, habitat for marine organisms around 25% of marine fisheries resources are concentrated in coral reef regions because of global warming coral reef ecosystems are witnessing degradation and that is reducing the food availability of of the uh, food availability 
for the people who reside in coastal areas okay so fisheries resources are shrinking because of multiple you know threats associated with climate change like ocean acidification coral uh, bleaching marine heat wave and that's how availability of food in tropical areas is decreasing second dimension of food security which is affected by climate change is access to food always remember the major factor which controls access to the food is economic factor in tropical areas most of the people they are engaged in uh, agriculture subsistence agriculture they are small farmers and their purchasing power is very low not only low it is also unstable in the wake of climate change the risk of crop failures agriculture failure has increased and that has further increased pressure on their income correct so their income is not only decreasing but also getting volatile and that is putting their food security under threat okay so one is income second is because of climate change and uh, extreme weather events the chances of crop failure have increased and that has increased volatility in the agricultural market so price fluctuations the inflationary tendencies in agricultural market they have also you know uh, stressed food security situation in tropical areas of the world then uh, the third dimension is utilization of food utilization of food means assimilation of nutrients by the body after proper digestion of food always remember utilization of food by the body depends on general health of an individual and availability of clean drinking water in the wake of climate change water availability is decreasing and due to decreased availability of clean drinking water we cannot secure food security of the people water is not only decreasing in quantitative manner water availability is also decreasing in qualitative manner so because of global warming the water quality is also degraded and that has increased the risk of water borne diseases like uh, 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 diarrhea and you must be aware that diarrhea degrades intestinal tissues of a child and when the tissues in intestine that is villi microvilli when they are damaged body fails to absorb the nutrients from the food okay so poor health because of a uh, uh, lack of access to clean drinking water that also negatively affects the food security so here you can connect the issues related uh, the, the threats related to climate change with food security one by one all the pillars of uh, uh, food security you can cover one more thing you need to add in this answer and that is map map showing the areas in the world the countries in tropical region which are facing water a uh, uh, food crisis so what are the countries which are facing food crisis sub saharan africa that is the country where a major portion of population that is facing the food insecurity or food crisis then tropical asia india bangladesh you know pakistan uh, southeast asia west asian countries they are also you know facing the problem of you know malnutrition or under nutrition so with the map you can show the areas of what uh, food crisis the areas where food security is threatened due to climate change the second question is why is world today confronted with the crisis of availability availability of and access to fresh water resources so this question was very much expected because a few months back un world water conference was held in new york and issues related to 
water availability and water crisis across the world were discussed at that conference. So question was very much expected. Now in this question, you were supposed to write an introduction, introduction related to, you know, water crisis. So first of all, introduction, an introduction, you were supposed to write about what is water crisis. And what are the components of water crisis? So what is water crisis? And what are components of water crisis? So water crisis. Water crisis. What is water crisis? Water crisis is a situation when the demand of water by the individuals in a region for socio-economic activities is higher than the water availability or water supply. So it's about demand supply mismatch. Requirement of water is high and supply is lower than the demand. That situation is called as water crisis. And water crisis has two components. One is crisis of availability and second is crisis of access to water. So crisis of availability, availability of water, you can call it physical crisis, correct? And second is crisis of access to fresh water. So first is crisis of availability and second is crisis of access to the fresh water. Crisis of availability, which is also called as physical crisis, is related to lack of availability of sufficient water in hydrological reservoirs like rivers, lakes, ponds, subsurface aquifers. They do not have sufficient water to meet the socio-economic demands of people in a region. That is called as physical crisis. मतलब हाइड्रोलॉजिकल रिजर्वायर्स में हाइड्रोलॉजिकल सिस्टम्स में पानी की कमी है ओके दैट इज फिजिकल क्राइसिस ऑफ एक्सेस मींस वाटर इज अवेलेबल इन द हाइड्रोलॉजिकल रिजर्वायर्स बट वाटर इज नॉट सप्लाइड टू द पीपल इट इज नॉट इट इज नॉट डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रॉपर्ली फ्रॉम सोर्स रीजन टू द कंज्यूमर ओके so it is basically crisis related to poor infrastructure lack of technology lack of capital or maybe due to you know uh, 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 dispute or war people are not getting the water okay that is called as crisis of access now because of multiple factors the crisis of availability and crisis of access has ag have aggravated in recent years so let's first talk about the factors which have you know uh, increased the crisis of availability of water crisis of availability crisis of availability of water crisis of availability of water has increased due to multiple factors the first major factor is change in land use change in land cover and land use that is one of the major factor which has reduced water availability in hydrological reservoirs we all know that rivers lakes subsurface aquifers they are recharged by hydrological processes rainfall infiltration okay evaporation all these processes they regulate water availability in the hydrological reservoirs by changing the land cover we have modified the hydrological processes which are responsible for recharging the aquifers or rivers or lakes correct for example deforestation deforestation is one of the example of land use change the plants and their roots 
they facilitate infiltration of rainwater and help in recharging the groundwater resources correct not only that the plants augment rainfall in dry season through transpiration so through transpiration plants release moisture in the air and they increase possibility of rain during dry season means by increasing possibility of rain in dry season plants prevent drying out of river or surface reservoirs during dry season correct so they recharge even surface reservoirs during which season dry season so that is the role of plants if we remove the plant cover water availability in both surface reservoirs and subsurface reservoirs will decrease similarly encroachment of water bodies encroachment of water bodies so water bodies like lakes ponds river beds they are being encroached for development of infrastructure or for cultivation of crops correct and the water bodies they are not only source of water but they also help in recharging the ground water if the water bodies wetlands lakes they are encroached if they they are concretized for urban development you know what water availability will decrease so that is about change in land cover or land use and major processes which are driving this land uh, land use change or land cover are industrialization agricultural expansion and urbanization these are the major processes which are driving the change in land cover and land use so here you can talk about how land use change uh, reduces water availability in the hydrological reservoirs the second reason is exponential growth in demand of water exponential growth in demand of fresh water correct means we have increased the amount of water which we extract from hydrological reservoirs so that is also reducing water availability in reservoirs that is exponential growth in demand of fresh water what is driving this exponential growth of fresh water exponential growth in demand of fresh water multiple factors one is like grow increase in population rapid rapid growth of population especially across africa and asia has reduced has led to reduction of per capita availability of water so in asia and africa one of the major reason behind decreasing per capita availability of water is exponential growth in population in last few decades correct but in developed countries if you ask me why developed countries are facing water crisis why uh, water demand in developed countries has increased in developed countries one of the main reason is increase in per capita per capita consumption of water per capita consumption of water is main reason a uh, uh, main factor which is driving the rapid increase in demand of water in developed countries like us us is one of the major consumer of water the water footprint of us is a third largest in the world after china and india now water footprint means how much water is required to support the population in a country china india these are top two countries in terms of water footprint means demand of water but in these countries main reason behind higher demand for water is what the large population size or rapid growth in population us is third largest you know uh, third third major country in terms of uh, water footprint in us main reason behind high demand for water is higher per capita consumption of water per capita consumption of water depends on standard of living and consumption pattern for example a non vegetarian person requires uh, consumes more water than vegetarian person because more water is needed to support the animal rearing activity than cropping activity correct so what kind of food we eat how many products we use in our daily life all increase our water consumption okay so in terms of per capita water consumption developed countries 
आर मच अहेड देन डेवलपिंग कंट्रीज बट इन ओवरऑल वॉटर फुटप्रिंट चाइना एंड इंडिया आर लीडिंग नेशन बिकॉज ऑफ हायर साइज लार्जर साइज ऑफ पॉपुलेशन other than that you know change in agriculture you can say intensification of intensification of agriculture intensification of agriculture means use of irrigation and other modern inputs to increase the agricultural productivity that has happened all across the world because of intensification of agriculture demand for water especially ground water has significantly increased and that has led to decreased water availability for example northwest india in northwest india after green revolution extraction of ground water has increased due to introduction of rice and uh, that has led to decreased availability decreased ground water availability in the region same way in central asia in central asia there is aral sea and two rivers are there sir darya and amu darya now in that area the irrigated farming has grown in recent years especially cotton cultivation wheat cultivation and due to expansion of irrigated farming the rate of, the, the volume of water which is extracted by farmers from these hydrological systems has increased and that has created crisis of water in that region same way chard lake one of the reason behind decreasing water availability in chard lake in western sahel region of africa is growth in demand okay so that is one of the reason so growth in demand of fresh water that is mainly driven by change in our consumption pattern change in agricultural practices and to some extent you know industrialization and other processes they are also contributing to increase in demand okay guys third factor which is responsible for crisis of availability is climate change climate change so climate change is responsible for change in rainfall pattern change in pattern of evapotranspiration from the soil and water bodies correct so because of change in rainfall pattern increase in rate of evapotranspiration desertification is happening especially in semi arid and sub humid areas of the world desertification means overall decrease in water availability so sahel region is typical example of desertification or loss of water availability in africa according to unesco in sub saharan africa around 480 million people are facing water scarcity across the world more than 2 billion people are facing water crisis and out of more than 2 billion people 450 million people including for uh, you know uh, uh, ch children they are facing water crisis in sub saharan region okay and the main reason is what climate change so all the water bodies in the world especially the water bodies in dry areas they are shrinking because of increased evaporation and decreasing rainfall and both changes are related to climate change fourth a uh, factor which is responsible for decreased water availability fresh water is pollution so because of various activities like agricultural commercialization mining open defecation there are so many human practices economic and social practices which are contributing to water pollution and polluted water is unfit for consumption so that is a kind of water crisis okay pollution of water so climate change uh, 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 encroachment of water these are the major factors which affect the crisis of water availability okay now second is crisis of access to water crisis of access to fresh water it is a kind of socio economic type of crisis water is there in in, in hydrological reservoirs 
but people are not getting that water due to inadequate infrastructure, lack of technology, lack of investment due to some political factors. So what are the factors? One factor is lack of infrastructure, lack of water infrastructure. So for distribution of water from hydrological reservoirs to households or to agricultural fields, we need proper technologies, water extraction technologies and water distribution pipeline network. In countries of Asia uh, uh, and Africa and even South America, the level of investment in water infrastructure and water technologies is low. And that is one of the main reason behind poor access to fresh water. Correct. So that is uh, uh, one of the factors which determines the, which is uh, responsible for poor access. Correct. Second factor is, you know, uh, you can say the war, war or conflict. So sometimes due to war, a particular region may suffer from water crisis. For example, in ongoing uh, 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 war between Russia and Ukraine, Russia destroyed a major dam in Ukraine on the Naipro river of Ukraine, that is Kakhokova dam. And due to destruction of Kakhokova dam by Russia, water availability in southern Ukraine significantly decreased. It created a kind of man-made water crisis in southern Ukraine. Correct. Same happened during Syria war. During Syria war, water was weaponized and water infrastructure was destroyed uh, uh, and that led to water crisis. So weaponization of water in the war situation may aggravate water crisis in a particular region and you can mention the example of Ukraine. Correct? Kakhokova dam destroyed by Russia. Russia used water as a weapon, uh, war weapon and that led to water crisis. Third is lack of cooperation. Lack of cooperation. Lack of cooperation. You know, uh, around 200 river basins they are spread across international boundaries. Means these river basins are shared by two or more than two countries. And there is lack of proper institutions for sharing of proper sharing of water resources among these countries. And this lack of, because of lack of proper institutional uh, mechanisms for promotion of sharing of water, the conflicts have emerged in these areas and these conflicts are creating the water crisis in these areas. For example, for example, uh, Nile Basin, Nile Basin. In Nile Basin, there is very poor coordination or, or, or there is lack of cooperation between the basin countries like uh, uh, Ethiopia, Sudan, uh, Egypt. Okay. Ethiopia is developing a dam, Grand Renaissance Dam on the Blue Nile, which is tributary of Nile River. And Blue Nile supplies 85% of water in the Nile River. Now construction of dam means water availability in downstream states like Egypt and Sudan will decrease significantly and that will create water crisis in the region. So that is one of the major issue in the region, in the Nile Basin. At you know, interstate level in India, Kaveri water dispute is example. Karnataka and Tamil Nadu governments, they are, uh, these two states, they are fighting over sharing of water of Kaveri river. And uh, they are not properly, you know, cooperating for augmentation of water supply in the basin. So rather than augmentation, augmenting the supply of water, both states are, uh, you know, uh, interested in having larger and larger share in the available water resources. And that is one of the main problem. That is one of the reason behind water crisis in the region. So whenever there is, you know, there is a free rider problem when a bas basin is spread across two states or two countries. Due to lack of proper arrangement, these two countries uh, do not, you know, uh, cooperate in, in, in augmentation or water harvesting. And rather than they, that, they 
fight uh, uh, on extraction of more in more water sindhu you know uh, indus river treaty so that is one of the main uh, uh, issue india pakistan in the wake of climate change hydrology of indus river has changed correct but still sharing is driven by the old treaty and that's why experts are saying both countries india and pakistan they should renegotiate the terms of treaty to properly utilize the water resources of indus basin fourth uh, uh, factor which uh, uh, has uh, which may create or which has created crisis of uh, access to fresh water that is social factor you know untouchability for example in india untouchability is one of the barrier for people to have access to fresh water so marginalized sections of society they may not have access to fresh water because of uh, untouchability or because they belong to a particular segment so that is the social barrier for uh, uh, the water same way in africa ethnic clashes they uh, uh, are one of the reason behind water crisis so imagine water uh, resources they are controlled by one ethnic group and other ethnic group may not have access to that water maybe water availability is sufficient to cater both the groups but because of the clashes because of lack of cooperation because of competitive tendencies the particular group of people is suffering from water crisis so this is how you were supposed to approach the questions of food security and water crisis and one more thing map is necessary like in this question you are supposed to draw the map showing the areas of extremely high water crisis moderate water crisis and low water crisis in extremely high water crisis you can show two types of areas one is dry region and second is areas of high population density for example gangetic plain and uh, northwest indian plain these areas are you know uh, 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 vulnerable to water crisis they are they are facing high to extremely high water crisis because of high density of population similarly sahel region west asia these are the areas where water crisis is mainly due to climate change or you can say a changing pattern of rainfall in the wake of climate change thank you